Two years ago, when we moved to, to Tyler, we bought our first house. I always wanted to be a homeowner. Finally get a chance to be a homeowner. Of course, there are things that they don't tell you when you become a homeowner. Like, there's no one on call 24-7 to come and fix things when they break. You are it. So you either got to figure out how to do this by watching YouTube tutorials, which I have watched at nauseam, or you convince one of your friends to come over and you bribe them with cookies to come over and help you fix those things. I've got a toilet that I need to go work on uh, this afternoon. So anybody want to help? Come on. Um, but we were there for just a few weeks. And I was taking the garbage out, and behind the garbage can was this massive hole in my lawn. I don't know where this came from. This was before we had dogs. So it wasn't anything that we did or our animals. I was like, well, where did this hole come from? That's weird. I went and got my shovel, filled the hole back in. The next morning went out. There's multiple holes in my lawn. Like, this is annoying. I don't know what's doing this. Went, filled it back in. Third day, go out there. There are holes running the length of my house on the side. I'm going, all right, this is a problem. We got to fix it. So um, a buddy of mine used to work for DeWalt. So he gave me one of these. So I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit up one night. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to shine a light. I'm going to catch this thing. Whatever this little critter is, is digging up my lawn. It's uninvited guests to my home. I'm going to catch it. If it comes at me, I'm, I'm going to whack it. Like, it's one of those kind of flashlights. And so uh, I went out. I'm sneaking around the side of the house trying to be real quiet. And there it was, shining, like my light shining right on it. Little beady eyes looking at me. This hideous, grotesque body. This armadillo. It's like, you know, it was like this big. And uh, it was a whole lot scarier at night, let me tell you. And uh, I shined the light and it didn't do anything. I was like, shoo, shoo, <laughs> nothing. So I went, all right, we got we to gotta step up our game. So I went out and did that week what any man in Texas would do. Went out and bought a gun. <laughs> now, in the city of Tyler, you can't discharge a firearm. It's against the city ordinance. So I got the next best thing. At least I thought, I got a pellet gun, right? And it was, it was serendipity because at that same week, I'm like researching things of what to buy. And uh, there was a news article that hit national news that week of a Texas man who had shot an armadillo with a 22 rifle. And it, re it deflected the bullet because they've got thick hides. It deflected the 22 bullet and ricocheted back and hit the guy in the face. So my wife is looking at me going, this is a really, really bad idea. I'm like, no, I'll be fine. I'm not trying to kill it. I'm not trying to hurt it. I'm trying to get it off my property. And so I went out and bought this uh, pistol. It was, it's, it was a menacing looking pistol, much more menacing than it actually is. And I go out there, I practice with it a few times. And so nighttime comes. So I take the, take the flashlight. I got the pistol like you see in the movies, right? I go around the corner and there it is, 1030 on the dot in my lawn, on my lawn, tearing it up. I'm like, all right. I aimed, pulled the trigger, hear this little, and nothing happened. I missed. So I tried it again. I leveled off. I'm like, all right, here we go. And that thing jumped so high and took off running. I jumped so high and took off running the other way. It was not one of my finer moments. Um, those things are fast. I ended up running in. I introduced myself to my next door neighbor a few weeks after that. And he said, I saw you one night running through your yard with a gun. I was going to say, hey, but I walked inside. <laughs> Uh, it was a pelican, it was an armadillo, it was, I'm, 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 not, I'm a nice guy. Still working on that relationship with him. <laughs> so then, all right, so that didn't work, so I had to go buy a cage. So I bought a cage. It took a few days to figure out how to get the cage set up in the right place to catch it. Well, I caught it. I, like, uh -huh, I got you. So I called animal control. I said, I got an armadillo. I need you to come pick it up. So they said, yes, sir, we'll come get it. And they took it off and released it somewhere. The next day, I go out there. There are holes in my lawn. So put the trap out again. Caught another armadillo. Call animal control. Hey, I got another one. I need you to come get it. Yes, sir. We're on our way. A few days later, more holes in my lawn. Put the trap out again. Catch the armadillo. Call animal control. They went, oh, you again. I said, where are you releasing these things? I'm going to mark it with a Sharpie, make sure it's not the same one coming back. <laughs> Over two months, I caught somewhere between eight to ten armadillos in my yard. 
I lost count, honestly. And uh, these uninvited guests who are getting onto my property, coming to my house, and wreaking havoc to my grass. My grass can only handle so many times being dug up. Our passage this morning, our passage this morning comes from Song of Solomon, and actually it talks about this idea. These uninvited guests that come and root their way into our relationships and undermine them. Now, what's fascinating about the Song of Solomon is that it is the sensual love poem between a husband and a wife, and it's in our Bibles. Like, God saw fit to include this in the middle of our Bibles, what is God's word to us. So God is celebrating the intimacy between a husband and a wife. In fact, he is celebrating the intimacy that is between a husband and a wife. This po- some of these poems uh, out of these eight chapters are so sensuous that uh, Jewish boys during the time of Jesus weren't allowed to read it until they had come of age. But in the midst of this playful passage in, in, in uh, chapter two, the wife looks at Solomon and says these words, She says, Solomon, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. She says, go catch that little vermin that is getting in and is ruining what we're trying to cultivate, these vineyards. Now, Song of Solomon is a poem, and poems use metaphors. She's not talking about an actual fox in an actual vineyard or an armadillo that needs to get captured. She's talking, she's talking about these things that are undermining her relationship with him. These, these things, these elements, these forces, maybe even people that are entering into their relationship and are doing damage to the goodness of the relationship that they have. And so uh, they... She is saying, you need to get out there and get rid of these uninvited guests. 